Hi, I'm Victor Gamov and in this video I would like to share five Kubernetes tools that I use every day when I do work around Kubernetes and I hope you find those tools useful. So what are we waiting for? Let's get to it. It's going to be fun. So I do demos. I do a lot of demos. Um, not like a whole lot of demos or all the things what I do is demos, but I do a substantial number of demos. During those presentations, I share very technical stuff. So technical that sometimes it doesn't even have a UI. So in this case, a lot of things that I show people happens in my terminal. Also command line tools, also known as black screen with white letters and uh, some person the typing typing there. Theater starts at the code check and your terminal starts with your command line prompt. So command line prompt needs to be useful enough so you will not lose track of the context, where you are, what are you doing. So first thing what we're going to be doing is customize our command line prompt. To do that, first tool today is CoolPS1. So CoolPS1 allows you to display a current uh, Kubernetes cluster context in your command line prompt. And uh, you also can display current namespace where you're working so you know what kind of pods and different workloads you have there. The cool thing about this tool, you not necessarily need to have all this information on the screen all the time. So you can uh, enable it when you need this, uh, you're doing some presentations or doing some work on your Kubernetes cluster, and when you don't need this, you can turn this off. So uh, this is why this tool comes with two command line shortcuts, coop on and coop off. I do create a lot of Kubernetes clusters on a daily basis. Sometimes it's a different version of Kubernetes, sometimes it's a different location, uh, maybe closer to the place where I'm doing certain things, so in this case the latency will be minimal, and uh, I need to switch between those clusters fairly quickly. The Kube control allows me to switch between those clusters um, relatively easy. So first of all, you need to execute command to get a list of your uh, registered clusters. Next thing, you need to choose the one that you want to switch. And after that, the issue command to change the current context. In many times, you need to do this fairly quickly. And it is not very easy to do when you need to type some commands over and over again. So that's why our next, um, next tool is going to be Coop CTX and uh, its counterpart NS. So these two commands are can be installed as a plugin for Coop Control. So you can use the same tools to do Coop Control NS, and after that you will switching namespace or Coop Control CTX. Uh, you switching your current cluster. So the cool thing that uh, this tool also integrates with uh, System Pager. Personally, I use FZF. It's a fantastic tool uh, that integrates my uh, with command line search and other things. So I can use some sort of uh, command line or like a text-based menu so where you can uh, select a specific specific cluster. I use this tool a lot and uh, during the day it saves me a lot of time to switching between different namespaces and different clusters. So we finally learned how we can switch between different clusters back and forth. Now uh, let's get some useful information. So our next tool is K9S. So K9S is a fantastic command line or tech based UI uh, that allows you to see all possible resources that you have in your Kubernetes cluster. You can see the pods, you can see, uh, you can drill down inside a particular pod and get the logs. You can uh, also um, follow those logs. So in this case, you're trying to investigate something, you go to a particular uh, pod, you drill down and you start seeing the logs. Um, UI allows you also to monitor certain resources, uh, health, and it's an incredibly useful tool um, if you're trying to stay in the console and try to get some of the uh, useful information. Using this nice text-based UI, you will be able to see in the real time what kind of stuff is going on in your cluster. Have you ever used a Kubernetes dashboard? You probably did. So 
Kubernetes dashboard is a standard monitoring tool that's available uh, for everyone who uses Kubernetes. It's a part of Kubernetes installation. It's an, uh, on GitHub. It's open source. It's cool, but in, uh, sometimes you need to do extra step to install it. Sometimes your operation folks don't want you to install random things in, uh, in your cluster. So that's why you need to find other way. So enter VMware Tenzu tool called Octant. I'm pretty sure I'm saying this incorrectly. Maybe it's Octant or Octant. It doesn't matter. So tool is fantastic. So during startup, Octant will uh, read current Kubernetes uh, context configuration from your kube control uh, config file, connect to this cluster and start a local HTTP server where you will be able to get very nice uh, and very powerful UI. You can do multiple things there. So you can go and uh, explore different resources that you have there. Uh, Octant supports not only standard Kubernetes resources, but also supports custom resources. You can go and see a dependency graph of different uh, different resources in your Kubernetes. And I think it's a pretty cool uh, feature that allows you to visualize what kind of components and how they can interact with each other. In many cases, in many demos that I do, I use thing called port forwarding a lot. So I don't need to set up um, external access to certain components so I can easily um, kind of like uh, connect to this one from outside world. And Octant supports this feature very nicely. So you can uh, drill down to a particular pod, you can find a list of ports that particular pod exposes, and after that, just a one click and you start port forwarding. So this is a pretty cool feature. You can start a multiple uh, port uh, forwarding sessions. You have a list of these uh, port forwarding sessions. So um, it will bound to some random local port, and you can always have a URL to this port. So it's uh, very useful for all sorts of demos. All right, so the last but not least, um, how many of you use Helm? I use Helm a lot, so that's why I wear this uh, Helm hoodie today. So Helm, it is a the standard tool that allows you to package your Kubernetes application. Uh, it provides you different uh, capabilities in terms of like its implementation and uh, uh, establishing dependencies between different components. So Helm is nice. So sometimes, all right, so Helm is nice. Sometimes things might get out of the hand and uh, you want to have a visual representation of what you have here. Uh, what kind of releases you installed, what kind of versions you installed, what kind of values go in there. Uh, yes, of course, you can use command line tools and you can do like a Helm list or Helm history. But uh, if you want to have everything in one place and uh, just a few clicks away from you, enter Helm cabin. Helm cabin. This is a component that you install inside uh, your Kubernetes cluster. And after that, you either provide external access by configuring ingress uh, to the pod that runs uh, Helm cabin, or you can use our previous tools, Octant, and do uh, port forwarding so you can access this uh, server locally. So while you get the access there, you first of all, you see the same list of releases. And while you click in on the release name, you can drill down to different components. You can get uh, uh, release values. You can see what kind of charts deploy there. You can see the nodes uh, that developer of particular chart providing to you. I think this is a pretty useful and cool tool for uh, some Helm release auditing purposes. Also for demos, when I uh, deploy something, I can easily drill down and see what kind of values and demonstrate this to the audience. I think it's, uh, it's pretty nice. You have to check this out. Okay, that's it for today. So if you found this video useful or somehow entertaining, so please consider subscribing to this channel and hit that like button. All right, stay tuned for more videos and as always, have a nice day.